Um, yeah, if he uh, drops that sucker, that's not gonna be good. And that's half the trees. Yes, I am very behind on video. What we're doing right now is we are going to install some of the rest of the stuff. <laughs> uh, we made the solar panels last night. Uh, I would have shot you a video, but uh, I had a lot on my plate that day and a lot of my batteries are charged. And even right now, this battery is only half charged. So that is our solar panel. We have it covered right now that's why it doesn't look like a solar panel um, because these things actually charge just sitting there they don't need to be hooked up to charge so to not get electrocuted we're keeping it covered because yeah don't want to get electrocuted so uh, you just missed the almost fiasco because my battery is about dead so I turned it off and this is what he did last time and nearly flipped the whole thing off because it's not strapped down very good yeah, if he uh, drops that sucker, that's not going to be good. Alright, so I figured I'd stop and show you guys this real quick. Unfortunately, due to time, I have not been able to shoot all the videos of all this stuff happening. And besides that fact, I have not had the time to edit anything. So, I apologize. You guys are missing a whole slew of informative and interesting videos. Hopefully... I will have edited at least some of them by this point and you could have seen it, but life on the farm just keeps on chugging. So here's what we have. Um, our giant tank. I did finish getting it cleaned out. Um, yeah, so I know you guys probably would have loved to see the video of Eric moving this thing with the tractor. I would have loved to see that video too. Unfortunately, he moved it while I was gone, so not happening. Anyway, it doesn't appear to have any damage that I can see, um, so I don't think he banged it up too badly. This might be a little bit. That one's probably from him. Um, I did clean it out really solidly, so here's where it's going to come off the line. Um, here's the plug. It's going to go in this hole right here, and then that's where it's going to exit. Now, I already know what you're saying. Whoa, wait a minute. You're gonna have a backup of sap going back up your line. No, because we only have 100 trees we're tapping. This, I think Eric said was 1,700 gallons. It's massive. So regardless, um, we don't even plan to fill this thing halfway. The halfway point would be like right here. And this would be like something like 700 gallons. Normally we have a 275 gallon tank out here. So basically 300 gallons. That line is well above the 300 gallon mark. So, um, yeah, it'll be just fine. This right here is where we're going to suck the sap out of. I believe, I haven't checked, but Eric said there's a pipe going straight down inside and it's gonna suck off the bottom. Um, this tank will be buried this summer. That's the goal. But it's painted so it should shield the sun pretty good. It should keep the sap fairly cold. And we're gonna pipe all the way up to there and pipe it into a 275 gallon tank. And then take the 275 gallon tank up to the sugar shack. So this won't move, this is stationary. And um, I know you're wondering about it corroding if it gets buried. Eric's thinking that we're gonna build like a basement for it. Basically cement and cinder blocks and then just kinda roof it over. So it'll be kinda like a sunken house, so to speak, that it sits in. We'll see. Anyhow, let me show you the rest of the setup. Oh, hey, look it. 
What's that over there? I do believe that's a solar panel. Yes. And I know you might be skeptical about this working, but it will work. Yeah, the solar panel system, it will work. Uh, we have the entire system rigged up right now. There's another farming YouTube channel that does maple syrup, and he did a video on the solar setup. And so we modified it just a little bit for our pump, because we're using a bigger pump than what he's using. Um, I think he only had one solar panel. We actually have two out there. But anyway, see this black line here? This is what, Eric's not here at the moment. He actually ran to Tractor Supply to get a couple more fitting conversions to finish up the black tubing. He had them, but somehow they got lost. So anyway, um, the blue tubing is going to go into our pump box, which is gonna sit where that table is. The black tubing is gonna come on the other side of the pump box, and it's going to flow, ideally, downhill. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna have to raise this up a little bit. This line has not been gradiated. So I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's not gonna flow. At this point it won't, no. It has to be leveled off. Um, it's just temporarily set right here for now. And then we'll string the whole thing up along the trees. It'll still be like maybe six inches off the ground, but it'll be leveled off correctly. So this. And then what we're gonna do, which I'll actually show you right now, since I have to get in here to tap trees, uh, once this is hooked up, uh, it won't be coming back in here at all with the side by side. So when the season is done, this is just gonna swing over like so, like that. Voila! Now we have the trail open back up. Pretty nifty, huh? All right, so now we get the exciting job of tapping trees. Woo! Actually, the first trees I'm gonna tap are the first trees that are gonna hit the line. So here is my plan of attack. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Uh, two prong approach there. First one, I can reach all these lines right here. And by the time Eric gets back and we get done with his thing over there, he can help me on the lines that are way above my head. And there are a couple of them. <laughs> the other approach is that the trees in the front are going to warm up faster than the trees deeper in the woods. So when you're running your pump and you're sucking sap, you want that to hit ideally as soon as possible. So you want the trees closest to get tapped. That way if I run out of time today, I can still be collecting sap from these trees and adding more trees on down the line. <sighs> All right, let's get moving. <gasps> All right, so we got the cooler situated. Um, we don't want to get it too low down here because this is a wet spot. So this is a little more high and dry. And the angle is perfect for that blue line to come right into it. And then it's going to shoot out and curve over to there. So it's perfect. Here is our orange extension cord. I know you guys are dying to see the inside of that cooler and I will show you in a little bit. Let's look and see where it goes. So we have a 100 foot extension cord. I believe it's 14 gauge, a 14 gauge extension cord. I think it was about 15 to 20 dollars for the extension cord. And then uh, Eric cut the ends off both sides and uh, wired it over here. Okay, so this is, he's got some shrink tubing on this. But basically when you cut the end up an extension cord, you have two wires plus ground. Um, two wires plus ground. You have a uh, negative and positive wires. So the red goes to positive and the black goes to negative. I don't know which one's which on here, but um, you know, Eric hooked it up, so hopefully it will work. Now that Eric's off the phone, let's take a look at the wiring over here. 
So these, this wire comes down here and we just connected it in here. Now we did have an issue getting the connections on this to connect. Guys, he had to drill it out a little bit. We got 240 pounds of sandbags gonna hold this down just in case we get any, well tomorrow we're gonna get big gusts of wind. All right, so I know you guys probably wanted to see how we attach the solar panels. Unfortunately, we put them together at like eight o'clock at night and a flurry in the barn. So Eric actually went through and made this entire frame. Ah, careful. So we made this frame first, but before that, we put these little brackets on. It comes with brackets. And uh, to connect two of them together, there's four holes. And we basically have a hole empty here and a hole empty between the two of them. And that acts as a spacer, so we've got about an inch between the two of them. And then over here, this is how the brackets are. And it's, I guess you can call it a Z bracket. And then the other side bolts onto the wood. Um, so they have two, two, and two. And that's how it attaches onto the frame. And how many four by fours, two by fours do we use? Six. Exactly six two by fours. And this was exactly six. So you need- I bought seven, I had one left over. Okay, so we needed exactly six. So I think we used one two by four for the frame right here. Um, and then another one for these guys here. And then when you put up solar panels, you have to look online to see at what angle you need your solar panels to measure. And we chose 45 degree angle because? Um, it varies between winter and summer. So the time we're tapping, it went from a 39 degree angle to like a 50 some degree angle. So we kind of just split the difference, went 45 for optimal sun. And they tell you to southeast southeast direction so and that would be south and that would be east and this is southeast so in theory this thing should work oh here's the specs on the back for those of you who like to do your own solar panels these guys were a steal how much did we pay it was what two hundred dollars for the two solar panels plus the whole setup yep With so the, what all the yeah converters and stuff yeah two hundred dollars out the door, you got two solar panels, so we're running 200 watts of electricity. Um, and then we have all of the line. It does not include the extension cord, but it does have the power converter on the inside of our cooler over there, which we'll show you that setup in a minute. Um, do you think we should run these lines under? I didn't know if that metal would wear into them. No, it's not moving. It'll be fine. Okay. I think the whole thing should be good. Yeah, we can pull the blanket off and it should tell us if we're getting some charge. And it's a kind of overcast today. Well, it's kind of sunny and oh, look it. Look, see, there's the sun. There's the sun and it's facing the solar panel. So if we wanted, we could actually turn it towards the sun a little bit more. You know, turn it more that direction. Safety tip. This is not like plugging an extension cord into your power outlet. Do not just connect anything on your solar panel. Please note, we have a blanket over top of the solar panel. No, that's not cat hair, although little sassafras thought it was great to climb on. This is actually deer hair from my deer. Yeah. Woo! So we screwed, this is just a moving pad from Harbor Freight. I think it was like two or three bucks. Buy a bunch of those guys. I mean, those things are so useful. You should just go buy some more next time you're down there. I use them for everything, like literally everything. Everything. So now it is live. What happens is that if you go to connect your solar panel, terminals, connections, or anything like that, and your solar panel is open, this is like a live power line that you are about to touch. And from what I read online, the electricity from these things can jump seven feet. You think we should go see if it's charging? Yes, let's go see if it's charging. So always cover your solar panel when you're getting ready to work on it. That's why we had it covered. Can you show them how we splice it? Yep. It? Now the splice, that was um, either two wires or three wires in there? You used two wires. Um, and I... How did you know which end was positive and which end was negative? I marked them with tape. Oh, okay. So you followed it from the back end there, yep. which says which one's which, followed and it down, and then... 
tape with positive on it. So okay, I, good. And then, um, I used like four layers of shrink wrap tubing just for extra security on the connections. Just to make sure. All right, so now we're gonna see if the solar panel hookup is correct. And we'll show you the inside of the solar panel box. And it's so exciting. Now, a huge, massive shout out to Spruce Creek Farms. All of my Canadian subscribers, he's out of Canada. Uh, he's another YouTuber slash farmer and he does maple syrup on a bigger scale than we do. But we found his video online about using the pump and he had a solar setup and we thought it was fantastic. So I contacted him and he was so gracious enough to give us some pointers and, I think it's definitely charging. and the specs on the equipment that he was using. We're not using all of the exact same stuff he is, but a lot of the same stuff. So let's look at this. See oh the, yeah, yeah, see the solar panel? The solar panel moving to the battery, moving to the light. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. I, I don't know, I don't know. I think you can. Anyway, there's a picture of a solar panel with the sun on it, airing over to the battery, and the battery's got little lines that are flickering back and forth, airing over to the light. So what this is saying is the solar panel is on, it's charging the battery, and it's putting out power. So we have our solar panel connections down here. The solar panel comes into these two terminals. Right here is the battery, so the power goes out of this thing here into your battery. And then over here, we have whatever unit you're gonna run off from this specifically. And this is running over to our little sensor right here. Now see those numbers are changing? This is our temperature sensor. This controls our pump. So if you want the specs for all of the equipment in this video, please look at the descriptions down below. You can find links online. So this is our first temperature sensor. It's in Celsius. We have it set to turn on the pump at about one degree Celsius, which is just slightly above freezing, freezing being zero for Celsius. Now the little light that you see over there, that means the pump is activated. It's not running because we have um, we have not put in the fuse. our fuse, which we do have a fuse coming off from this going to the pump. In case he gets a power surge or anything like that, we have an inline fuse. Um, here's our pump. Just, so we try this, it? Just make sure it works. oh, it'll work. You hear that running, guys? That's the pump. Since everything's not hooked up, we're not going to run the pump quite yet. And I still got to finish hooking up a few lines. Here. So, this is exciting. This this means everything's on. Now you're gonna see another control over here. This also has a temperature on it, 7.1. That's the internal temperature of this box. Because these pumps cannot handle freezing conditions, it will destroy the pump. So we actually have Eric pulled a car light bulb. It's a reverse light. Re a backup light. Yep. Reverse light. Um, and he has it angled right towards the pump and it should give off enough heat to keep the pump area warm until I, it finishes cycling all the sap out. I believe it's a 35 or 40 watt bulb. So I also have a headlight bulb that we can put in too if this doesn't get hot enough. But we want to keep it as low as watts as possible so it doesn't drain our batteries too much. Right. Um, so this right here, this has a temperature sensor. You can see the plug is inside. This plug actually goes outside the unit. See him poking out right there, see him? So he's taking the outside temperature. So when you're running your pump, you want your pump to turn on, depending on the person, I think we have ours set to turn on about 33 degrees and it will keep on running and then it won't turn off until the pump drops back down to about 29 degrees. The reason being is that we want all of the liquid in all of the lines to cycle out before it turns off because if any of that ice stays in the pump, it could potentially destroy it. So we have that as a backup and then in case it doesn't quite get everything out, we have the light bulb set to turn on in about 32 degrees. So as soon as it hits 32 degrees, that light bulb is gonna turn on and stay on. Now, this senses the inside temperature here. 
The other one goes outside. So they're independent of each other, hence the two different temperatures. The inside temperature here is 6.7 degrees Celsius. The outside is 2.6. If we left this open long enough, they would both be equal. And we wired these batteries in parallel too. Yes. And I looked online and there's a special way to charge when you're running in parallel to so get an even charge. You hook the positive or the negative to one side of the battery and the positive to the, your second side of the battery and then it will give you an equal charge between the two batteries. Otherwise, if you just went positive negative, it's going to charge this first battery more than the second battery. And you have a fuse on this one as well, right? Yep. Okay, so this wire right here is the one that's coming off from this, which comes from the solar panel. So the pan solar panel directly comes out and it splits between the two batteries. As Erica explained, you've got the negative coming to this side and you've got the positive coming to this side. And then in addition, he has wired off um, the positive to connect over to this positive and the negative on this one to connect over to the negative on this one. So everything should be equally charged. You don't need two batteries, but we had two batteries on hand and we figured we might as well just use them just in case, since this is the first time we've used the system. This is a little bit bigger pump than the other videos we watched. Yes, this is the SureFlow 4048. So the other videos show the 4008. This is a big heavy pump. This is a 15 amp pump. So that's why we have two solar panels, which also help power our two terminals here plus the light. So now this turns on the pump and then this one right here is directly wired over to the battery. This little guy you can pick up for about three bucks. This little guy is about eight dollars and this comes with a solar panel set for two hundred dollars. And then the SureFlow pump, I believe, was about 130 to 140. And then here's the filter. So we have our tubing over here. The sap is going to get sucked into the tubing. Eric drilled a hole into the cooler here. That's going to come in. This is our inline filter. It's upside down so that you can remove it easily. It sucks into the pump and then it shoots right back out. What size line are we using? And I believe this is half inch line. And then Eric just took some plywood and cut it roughly to size to set everything on and then screwed these items down onto the side here. And this, this is a Coleman cooler. Um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but this cooler was on sale at Menards for 50 dollars normally i think it was a hundred dollars for this cooler we got it on clearance at the end of season so we bought it in february anytime between christmas and after is the time to look for these cheap coolers you can buy a used one too we couldn't find any used ones near us that were big enough but this was a heck of a deal on sale plus it has these nice little handles to be able to carry through and you can see that eric just drilled a hole to insert the tubing out of the cooler is great because it keeps it watertight, plus it keeps it warm, and we need the pump to stay warm. So, that is the setup. We see that our solar is working. We know the pump is working. I've already tested all of the settings. Oh, and for those of you that are looking to hook this up for your own May production, um, I'm gonna tell you, this little guy right here is very confusing to set up. So, read the back of the directions. We made the mistake for I don't know how many days we didn't know the directions on the back side of the page. It was two-sided. Yeah, read the back, it'll help you figure it out. But pretty much um, P0 is gonna tell you do you want to heat something or do you want to cool something? And we have it on cooling. So when the temperature rises, we want it to be on. And then as the temperature falls, it turns back off again. So we want it on C. The other thing you want is about a two degree difference so that when it drops down two degrees past your turn on temperature, so if your turn on temperature is zero, you want it negative two so that it turns off two degrees colder than it starts. Okie dokie. Man guys, I am so excited about this. I know Eric, 
was really, really skeptical on this entire thing working. He's like, let's just throw a battery out there and you can go out every day and hook it up. guys. Uh oh. I don't know guys. I mean, we can't even cook. This whole thing is a big popsicle. So, and right now, there's nothing moving for some reason. Ooh, it just hit zero degrees Celsius. So we are not the only people that do this, okay? Spruce Creek Farm, like I said, he went through and he designed his own entire setup. So full credit to him for our setup here. All of our ideas that we're using came from his videos. Thank you so much for all of your help. It was so appreciated and we are gonna love this new system.